outputs as a uh, as a state. So, <laughs> thank, thank outside of so California, cool. that is. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, and now I know for the Urban Grant Initiative, you know, you guys are. I don't, I don't want to say everywhere, but I've seen a chapter in was it St. Louis, and for you ladies, I believe some of you are in, in, in Delaware now. Are there any laws in place for urban gardening? I can jump in on this one. I think it, again, really depends on like where you're building the garden. Uh, like you said, we are in a lot of different places. I think it really depends on what chapter you're talking about specifically, but just relating it here to Delaware since Priya and I are both here. Um, a lot of the gardens that we've built in Wilmington, Delaware are located at you know a community center or school. So it's already land that we can be growing on. Um, and there's some restrictions in terms of like, you know, brown fields and if like the soil is contaminated, if we can grow on there. But otherwise, I think a lot of the land that's already there at the schools, you know, we do some tests prior to ensure that we can grow veggies there. And after that, um, we're able to grow on, you know, just like pieces of land. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, what am I missing um, from my diet and, and where and where can I get it from? That that's pretty much, I guess, for um, for uh, you know, for those that are you know regularly not eating right, and they already know that, but they don't, know, uh, you know, they don't know how to go about it to I I improve their their diet. Other than stopping at like a smoothie shop. Did you want me to answer that or? Yes, go for it. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. I'm so I. I, you know, again, without looking at someone's eating, I'm not sure, you know, we would be guessing as to what that person's missing, right? I mean, we know that the average, you know, uh, uh, most of us, like if you go back to that list that I showed, you could see in our, it, by looking at, most of us aren't eating enough fruits and vegetables and whole grains in general. So that would mean, you know, we could vitamin A, vitamin C, these are these are the, the the main nutrients that that vitamins and minerals are the things that I think you're are you know the person's asking to so which ones I'm not sure you might be missing but um overall you know 80 percent of us in America are not getting enough of those foods and so you can be sure that we're probably not getting enough vitamin A enough vitamin C probably you know again I'm not sure but you may not be getting enough calcium and along with that, we get vitamin D in a lot of those, which is an important vitamin that we need during the winter here in Michigan when we're not getting enough sunlight. Um, overall, the biggest mineral that um, we don't tend to get enough of is magnesium. Um, and some of the these minerals that we get from eating nuts and seeds. And so if you have the opportunity to add those to your diet, those are called micronutrients those minerals that we need just a little of, of every day that are really helpful. So if those are foods that you like, you know, I would re recommend adding those on a regular basis. But when we eat by that plate method where we're getting fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and we should be getting a lot of the nutrients that we need. So depending on if you feel like you're not, um, you know, I think that looking and you know maybe the next time that you have a physical or something and maybe a chance to ask the, then um i would also recommend something like my fitness pal which is free you could put in like the food that you are eating and even they have fast food options or you know chipotle if it's mid 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 fast food kind of places and you could track what you're eating and your intake on your own and it will show you exactly what nutrients are you're missing. Um, there's several other websites that I've used with my students and I'm having a mental block on what it is. So I'll, I'll let Gerard know and maybe he can send it out later, but you could do the same thing, track it for a couple of days and get an idea. If you're someone who eats the same thing every day, then it's really simple. Put those foods in and it's gonna give you an idea. Like you're only getting 10% of your vitamin A, 10% of your vitamin C, and then you'll be able to, you know, then you could go back online and, and look at what foods are good sources of that. And that may be one way for you to 
you know, empower yourself to see what is missing. Um, I always say it's best to eat your food. You know, the smoothies at like Tropical Smoothie can be quite expensive. And sometimes they can be quite fruit forward and you might be getting a lot of fruit and not getting all the other food that you could have gotten for that $6. And so I think that they're, you know, obviously a really good, tasty, you know, occasional food, but I always say like eat your food and um, get all the benefits from the fiber and um, that chance to eat it. So I think there's a balance act. And I know that those, those smoothies are, are not, they are expensive, so. And Sorry to be long-winded on that. <laughs> no, uh, thank you. That was that was thorough. Um, and um, uh, someone just uh, pointed out that I hadn't actually clicked the uh, the enter button to actually show the question, so I <laughs> apologize on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, for at least for for Michigan, I'm not too familiar with. Um, you know, with Wilmington, Denver, I mean, Wilmington, um, Delaware, I've heard of Dover, Delaware, but as far as like Michigan, at least Southeast Michigan is very diverse. You know, you have like, uh, Middle Eastern populations, uh, Hispanic populations, um, even, um, some West African populations. I myself from West African. So, um, you know, some of our culture kind of plays into, um, you know, our diet as far as, you know, how, you know, how often we get our fruits and vegetables in. Now, one of the questions that's uh, up on here is, when is the right time to go vegan? Now, before I, you know, before you, uh, you ladies chime in, I, I'm, it's, it's safe to assume that everyone in here that has any kind of experience with urban gardening, I'm assuming that, you know, each of you eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. Is that accurate or no? pretty much. So now if any of you happen to be vegan, you can, you're free to take that question, take Destiny's question. When is the right time to go vegan? Yeah, I can jump in on this actually. Um, so I've been vegan probably at this point for over eight years. Um, so I started at a very early age going vegan. Um, and honestly, not to go through like my whole vegan story, but I like went vegan like almost overnight. Um, so I don't know if necessarily nutrients wise, it was like the best decision um, to go vegan like so early on. But I know for me, like I've just grown up with like a number of allergies to like dairy and like some other products. Um, so honestly, it was just like me cutting out meat and seafood. And I think at the time that I went vegan, um, it was largely because I didn't really even like like eating those foods. Um, but over time, kind of learned like how beneficial to the environment going vegan is. So I think in terms of, I guess, like friends that I have that have also gone vegetarian or vegan um, after that, um, it really is, I think the most important thing is finding like a um, more stable way to go vegan. A lot of people that I've seen that go vegan, you know, overnight or vegetarian overnight, um, like three months into it, then they like all of a sudden are not that anymore because they did not do it in a very sustainable way. Um, so I think like starting with those steps and then kind of um, over time that might become, you know, being entirely vegan or something, but it might just start off with like cutting out meat. Um, but unless I'm sure Emily, you probably have a more professional view on this. Um, I don't think there's like necessarily an age that you can't, you know, go vegan at. Okay, yeah, I think, no. I, I think you're very, you know, right on it that there's no like perfect time, right? And there's it's not right for everybody. Um, but if it's something that you want to do, like Megan's saying, um, you really want to make sure that you're doing it in a sustainable way, in a way that fuels you properly. Um, just because Oreo cookies are vegan doesn't mean that they're nutritious. And so, <laughs> um, and I'm not here to give any medical information, you know, this is educational only, but um, if you are vegan, you do need to take a B12 supplement. Um, I don't recommend supplements, you know, every day to any, everybody, but um, B12 is only available in animal products. And so Megan probably is taking B12. Um, you have to take B12. It's essential <laughs> um, if you're vegan at any age. And then there's also, um, I would recommend uh, algae-based omega-3 fatty acid. Um, and those are the two like supplements. But in terms of when to go vegan, I think it has to be with, are, you know, have you planned and prepared properly so that you have all the, the food to be, to, for it to be nutritious? 
yeah, that would be my first first impression. Excellent. Now, you know, for, you know, for the high school athletes now, you know, that are looking to kind of clean up their diet, I didn't hear any mention of um, like non-dairy ways to get calcium. If a person was, you know, let's say eating, they had started eating way more fruits and vegetables than, and, and, and cutting back the meats, how would they still be able to get the calcium in? Did you want me to answer that or does anyone else want to share? Well, all anyone, the greens, all the greens are excellent non-dairy sources of calcium, you know, including broccoli, you know, and then nuts and seeds have some calcium as well. Um, and then fortified foods. So non-dairy, you know, plant-based, all the non-dairy plant-based milks, there's fortified orange juice. Um, so that's, you know, starting to pay attention at the grocery level at labeling. Um, where you might get this added calcium. Um, I feel like I'm missing one of my uh, things I was going to say, but yeah, so that that's, there's, there's, there's several different routes. Some of the non-dairy yogurts that have come on the market are also calcium fortified. Again, they're not necessarily um, great priced. You know, oftentimes these plant-based yogurts and things like that are um, a little bit expensive. Um, but yes, cal non-dairy basis calcium is important. What's interesting is, is that um, as a vegan, you don't necessarily have the same stress on your body. And so we haven't really seen, if you look at research, and I just happened to, when I, in my graduate work, <laughs> look at this at one point, non-dairy sources of calcium, oh, as well as um, mineral water can also provide you calcium. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, 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 we actually haven't found that, you know, vegans necessarily have any higher risk for, for example, of osteoporosis and things like that. So that's the good news. <laughs> um, so the, the stress on our system in terms of how we metabolize certain foods um, has made it, you know, kind of alters how much calcium we actually need ultimately. So our ability to absorb calcium from non-dairy sources isn't quite as good, but it doesn't seem to have a negative benefit in terms of our, our bone health. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. I want to thank the Urban Garden Initiative. Um, I want to thank Keep Detroit Growing. Um, keep Growing Detroit, I'm sorry. I want to thank um, Diet Detroit um, and everyone for, for coming through for this event. Um, you know, we obviously learned a, a lot today. I know I definitely learned a lot myself. So uh, I can imagine a kid that's in high school or, you know, or even in college, you know. Um, with that being said, we have some resources and links um, in the chat box. Uh, you got Youth United at WC Youth United. We're on Instagram, um, Facebook, and Twitter. We got our Youth Advisory Council, Youth Move Detroit. Uh, Instagram, that's at Youth Move underscore Detroit. Uh, Urban Garden Initiative, that's at the Urban Garden Initiative. They're on, um, I know for a fact, they're on Instagram um, and, uh, and Facebook. Uh, Diet Detroit, you got uh, dietdetroit.com or at Diet Detroit, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, Keep Growing Detroit, that's DetroitAgriculture.net. Um, I hope to see you all um, once we put together another uh, event, hopefully next year on eating healthy, urban gardening, and sustainability. Thank you all so much. Yeah, I can't wait to see everyone's pictures of their food that they're going to grow and cook. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. This was great. Thank all of you. I have to ask, Emily, you went to SL? I did. I, I, I'm embarrassed. I'm probably a lot older than you, but so did I. <laughs> well, nice to meet you. <laughs> yes, yes. I graduated, I'm going to say, and I'll say in 79. Do you know, it it's gone. Years. SL is gone. Yeah. I'm saddened by that. So <laughs> a lot of good memories.